in college i missed a conditioning session because i slept through an alarm and i got i for a week i had to come to like 6 a.m running session college where <laughs> no <laughs> say it i don't wanna say <laughs> where i went to college <laughs> went to harvard francis god damn right. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> the bracket is presented by omega accounting solutions if your business suffered significant financial losses or had to shut down in part or full during the pandemic, you may be eligible for ERC, Employee Retention Credit, the powerful payroll tax credit. It was passed as part of the CARES Act to help small businesses recover from the pandemic. If you employed five to 500 employees and paid payroll during COVID, you may be eligible for a refund, refund of up to $26,000 per employee. There are a bunch of subsidies and tax credits for big businesses. Large corporations always take advantage of those forever. The employee retention credit is finally a subsidy that's made exclusively for small businesses, but it has a limited window of opportunity. Now is the time to act before the government's filing window closes, and this refund is gone for good. Omega Accounting Solutions is a government tax incentive expert and offers services and business intelligence, fractional accounting, and analytics. Omega is a small business champion, helping small businesses and small business owners navigate the complexities of accounting processes, particularly the immense opportunities around the ERC. Omega empowers small and mid-sized businesses (SMBs) owners to make informed decisions about uh, in, informed business decisions about everything about through powerful accounting, data analytics, and insightful reporting. A 10-minute call to Omega's ERC specialist can help your company recover up to $26,000 per employee. Call Omega Accounting Solutions at 800-704-2000 or go to omegataxcredits.com to learn more. Tommy's list was like you had this prepped for years. I have a list of a 200 pages of thoughts. It's insane. <laughs> so I just, Where could those go? I, nowhere. That can only be used here. At least we don't record on Thursday. I think that's going to be my Halloween costume. I want to be the ghost of Tommy's Thursday thoughts. <laughs> Actually, you gave me like literally, I think, 20 of them. And at least 10 of them made the bracket. Like, it's insane how good yeah, they I'm were. I'm scared of a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff to be scared of. Yeah. Uh, all right. That could just be the start of this episode. We are on the bracket episode 51 today. Francis will be in a little bit later. We have Big T subbing in as well. Um, we are doing a bracket of the scariest moments. Scariest moments. We're not doing scariest moments like, yeah, when someone pulls a gun on you. Like, yeah, that sure. But like, we're doing... Realistically, scary. more realistic. I, mean, I guess that is realistic, especially in this city, especially in this damn city. Man, we're talking more day to day scary, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so before we talk about that, let's talk about Omega Accounting. Oh, wait, no, that's I do the pre roll, so that doesn't really count. Uh, but before that, let's talk about game time. All right, let's talk about game time. Game time is the exclusive ticketing partner for Barstool Sports. You've seen us post about them a million times. They give us some of the most amazing tickets I think all of us have ever had. I went to a Yankee game with it. I'm sure you've all been sick of hearing me talk about the Panic at the Disco concert I went to, which was awesome. You can use them later on as well to go to some. I'm thinking Billy Joel. As a Long Islander, I've never been to Billy Joel, which is sort of a disgrace because I feel like it's like a rite of passage for us. So I'm going to use them for that. Uh, it's created by fans, for fans. They are the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, you don't, I don't know what you're waiting for because you guys are going to love this app. And the MLB playoffs are underway, and now is the time to give Game Time a shot. If you're a Philly fan, odds are, I think, if we're, we're mostly East, Co East Coast listenership, go watch the Phillies in the World Series. It would be awesome. We've had tons of Barstool fans using, uh, using it, hitting us up on social media about how great the deals that uh, they're getting are. Uh, I've been using Game Time all year again. I, you may be so sick of hearing me talk about Panic of the Disco, but it really was that good. Brandon Yuri's voice is just insane. And I'll be using it later on this year as well. Also used it to get to a Rangers game. I forgot. That's in November. Um, it'd be, so, yeah, so easy to use. Amazing deals. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the U.S. You are going to love it. Download the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login, and redeem code LCB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thanks, Game Time. All right, we have our first matchup of the day. I got to say, uh, I like Halloween specials more than Christmas specials in, in, in media. Yeah. What Halloween special? House of Simpsons, Horror. yeah. Oh, Treehouse of Horror, yes. Um, the McDonald, remember buying McDonald's VHSs? Yeah, I, I never really, I never liked the specials. I loved specials. Or the musical man. ones. I didn't like musicals. Always been an Albiest, an, an Albiest. Fuck. What could have been good too? What? A what? Said I've always hated the specials, and I said he's ableist. Oh, oh, he's ah, ableist. Oh, shit. Damn it. 
You want to run it back? <laughs> run it back. Right, That's it simple again. editing. Say it again. I've never been a fan of the specials for like TV and shit. I was always been an ableist. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, Man, that was well. Was that fucking rehearsed? Was that off the cuff? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but yeah, I think the some Christmas specials are good though. You ever watch the Always Sunny Christmas special? Yeah, my favorites. It's good. I just like seeing my favorite characters in costumes. It's crazy. Oh, they actually have a very good Halloween special with Always Sunny too. The one where who got deep pregnant or whatever. Yes. It, damn. Now, if we're talking musicals, Nightman Cometh, one of the greatest Always Sunny episodes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's good, but I don't like when people break into song. Mm. But that was like they, they were, were on a stage. Yeah. This one was, yeah, that was actually so, funny. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a kind of a weird question? I have actually haven't asked this to anybody. Uh-huh. Um, I was a day one Always Sunny guy, and I fell off towards the end. Um, but I used to watch it, and there was a show right after that I thought was actually way better. And it was called Starved. And it was a show about a group of, I think it was like three or four dudes, and they all had eating disorders. Like, I've <laughs> never heard of this. Uh, better than it's so sunny at all. And wasn't better at all by any means, you by any it? standards, by any measures, you by any it? opinions. No, I just know. It was literally right after the show. So they were on oh, the same, FX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Starved? Who was in Starved? I'm pretty sure the guy from This Is Us. Clemmer. Uh, <laughs> Milo. Milo. Ventimiglia. Milo. It's Eric Schaefer, Lauren Ber- Benati. Del Pentecost and Sterling K. Brown. So that's the guy yeah. from This Is Us. Yeah. Is it a comedy? Yes. It was very funny. So Sterling K. Brown's like jacked and he was a police officer, but he just like had these like body dysmorphia issues where he just like kept feeling, feeling fat. And there were some of his friends were like really fat, but they all had like different eating disorders and they were dudes. It was funny. On its face, this doesn't sound at funnier than It's Always Sunny at all. Or- I, w- I would watch them both and was fans of both of them and i Actually. really looked for, and that got canceled i think after one or two seasons but it was very very funny it made it one season yeah. a singular season and I'm, everyone i'm gonna binge it tonight <laughs> <laughs> oh you <laughs> that was mean uh, <laughs> so our first matchup of the day is the number 12 seed and we've talked like we've, we've talked kind of about this before the moment that you realize that you're too high oh the, the very moment when you realize oh i've gone too far um, and that is going up against the number five seed when you can't find your parents as a kid, which is another way. That's one of Tommy's, I believe. Not being able to find your parents as a child, all time scary moment. Tommy, since this is one of your picks, you get to go first. Yeah, so oh, this happened a couple times for me as a kid. One time I was like three or four in a, in a hardware store, couldn't find my parents, scariest minute of my life. Another time my mom just hit on me in the mall for like 30 seconds. I found that to be a little mean. She what? She like hit on me. Ew. Hid, 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 hid. Oh my hid. God. Hid. She like just stood behind a rack just to like see me freak out. And I was like, that's you can't do that to a kid. Uh, so that always gave me a lot of terror. Um, and that's one of the reasons I never went to summer camps as a kid. I cried my way out of almost every summer camp I ever went to because I had, for some reason, this fear that I wouldn't get picked up by my parents at summer camp. <laughs> I don't know why my parents were loving. They never had abandoned me or thought of abandoning me. But I always was afraid, I don't know, if I go to the summer camp, my parents won't pick me up. I don't know. If I saw you knowing the way you look because you post so many pictures of yourself as a child and I was like a child molester, I'd be like, ah, I don't need this guy. I think oh, I'm man. fine. I was too ugly. Uh, if yeah. I were a child, the only thing that could mean, I think. <laughs> <laughs> child monsters in it for the hotness, though, or is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yes. Really? Oh, I thought yes, it was more. Spectacular. I feel like I was very ripe to be taken oh. advantage of. No, no, it's 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 a physical game. Huh. There is like a level of protection to ugliness as a child. No. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you're gonna go with can't finding. Uh, well, no, too high. Also, is I had one experience like this. Actually, I'm gonna find. Debating if I want to play this video. Yes. Oh, it yes, you do. I got way too high on an edible. I was by myself in my room or in my living room. Definitely play it. And I was like, I am too high right now. And I just thought I have a balcony and I was like, I'm going to jump off this balcony. Not in like a suicidal way, but in like a, I can't control my body right now way. You know, where it's like I don't have control. Like I could hurl. Maybe myself. the government was right. Yeah. My we, God. And I was about to like. Uh, like have spider like call the ambulance but then I remembered Robbie's blog where he like thought he was having a heart attack and he's like you're just too high so I calmed myself down I was like you're just too high you're just too high Tommy you're just too high and I made this video <laughs> to myself oh, I can't wait to I'm so excited oh, no. I'm it's, so it's, happy I don't know why uh, I hope I don't say anything problematic in it but I know I have it <laughs> I know for some reason it kind of sounds like I have an Indian accent 
<laughs> Fuck yes. Hold on. Let me find. I can't this. wait for this. And in India, sure. that, that, if that's like your your tick or whatever, every time you get high, you just, yeah. Right, oh, it was like Halloween accent. 2020. Because I remember me, Kyle, and Nick, we went to like, we went the next day to your friend's Halloween party. And I was like still feeling completely out of it. Oh boy, I got a lot of different videos. Uh, was he still like a little bit of an Indian accent? He was like halfway between. Like I thought it was part of his. Costume. I don't think I did. Did we do that? <laughs> he did Justin Trudeau and brownface Halloween party. Just play, we'll cut out anything that if you say anything problematic. Oh, I I just I can't find what just. Put the bottom closer to the mic. <laughs> this might not be. The what could this possibly be, Tommy? Is this? Yo. this isn't the one. What is this? I was just yeah, taking videos this? of myself. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I don't know. Hold on. There's one where I'm talking to the camera and I'm like, "You're to too see. high." I think it's that was a little <laughs> scary. scary. That was eerie. Scary, right? <laughs> oh no! Remind yourself to maybe not do this. <laughs> Oh, oh no. no! No, it was too funny. It was too funny. Oh, oh, too funny oh. for coffee. Uh, it oh goes on god. for about twenty more seconds if we want it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Her mouth. <laughs> and that was oh fuck, that was bad. That was a lot of coffee. That was a lot. Wait, is there more? Too funny I, yeah, I, I don't know how it. This is Wait, you're doing like a Russian. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> I, I can watch this. Why thing. did you say? Why did you keep that? If I woke up and oh had that, God. it was a reminder. Never get this high again. Yeah. Good God. So which one are you going one. with? You yeah, ever smoke you yourself uh, into I a different ethnic too high. Because I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, not finding your parents. Like at the end of the day, you're, you're probably gonna find them. Uh, and it's usually a temporary. Like that feeling of highness is like I'm gonna die. Uh, so I'm gonna go getting too high. Are right, you guys ready for this? Yeah, make that. Oh, yeah, I know. There's no camera video. angle on that. Yeah, it, it went in. Yep, it went in. Um, I regret playing the video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, send it, send <laughs> yeah. in the chat so we can please include that into. Yeah, I will. Everybody has gotten too high that has smoked. It's like almost a rite of passage, but it's it's not even the passage. It happens <laughs> if you're an experienced smoker or not. Like I'm not at all. I uh, I have these. 15 milligram gummy bears and i eat the ears and i'm like i'm too fucking high so that's like two milligrams of weed maybe of, of thc if that. um but like whenever i think i'm too high it kind of goes in waves so it's like oh there's like this like euphoric wave and then i panic but then i get out of it it hasn't been any long form make a video kind of thing have you guys ever woken up and your parents weren't in the house yeah happened to me once woke up nightmare parents weren't there mm -hmm. middle of the night how old were you Probably six. Where were they? Casino. No, they were at the <laughs> hospital. There was a friend. They had to run to the hospital, which I understand. I don't resent that, but it was very scary. Yeah. yeah uh, it where um, you wake up or something like later in the night and like there's a family friend, like husband and wife, like over your house later at night. Oh, yeah. Come out of the, <laughs> the room oh, together. Oh, that, uh, yeah. Well, like a lot of pineapples. A lot of pineapples. Oh, it was it, weird. Yeah. Uh, they upside down, but. Yeah. Uh, getting too high, like Tommy said, I, I have waves of, I have a window in my room, and I've had the same exact thought. Yeah. I'm just like, I couldn't stop myself if I wanted to do this. Yeah, it's not even wanting to. It's, not. it's like my body is like possessed, and like I can't stop my body from just hurling itself over this balcony. Yeah, maybe we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going getting too high. Getting too high. Sorry, Tommy, I was too distracted by making that shot. Which one did you pick? Uh, getting too high. Getting too high. Che? What is a pineapple pineapple upside down cake? Uh, a pineapple upside down cake? cake? Yeah. It's the pineapple is at the bottom and they flip it and then it's at the top, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like made with the pineapple at the bottom, but I think they dump it out, they flip it upside down. Oh, interesting. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, I would think... So, I actually have gotten too high on edibles. I did them once and it was an awful, 0 for 1. awful experience. Yeah, <laughs> awful experience. Uh, any accents you broke into or, uh, not that I can recall. Uh, it was, it was a, it, the, 
I don't want to say the hangover, but like the effects of it lasted for days. Mm -hmm. It was awful. But not finding your parents, that moment of, you know, you're not self-sufficient enough to do anything or care for yourself or probably like in Nick's case, like, I don't know if that age you could like read a note from your parents being like, we're at the hospital or something like that. I think they left so hastily Yeah, that there wasn't, there was no note time. Yeah. So I would think that that is a panic button because that's going to be your first introduction to real life terror. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're too high, it's of your own accord. And then you've also probably experienced some type of scary thing before you can rationalize with yourself or you have the resourcefulness to be like, oh, Robbie wrote a blog about this. But if you're six years old or something where you can't find your parents, you have nothing. Mm-hmm. It is kind of cr- for that. It's crazy. how you thought about like, the thoughts running through your head as you explain them to somehow turn to, oh, remember Robbie's blog? Well, no, because I was like, I'm going to go in Spider's room and have him call the ambulance because I'm having a heart attack. And I, I remember literally him being like, he did the same thing to Trent where he was like, call the ambulance. Trent was like, Robbie, you're just too high. So yeah. I was like, all right, you're, I was able to reason. I was like, I'm probably just too high. I'm have you ever called one of your parents? Oh, hi. Yeah, I did that once because yeah. I was too high. I had to call the old Bad man. Move. Yeah. Like to be like, this is it? No, just be like, hey, I think I smoked too much. And he just like distracted me. Oh, uh, okay. guy. Gotcha. All right, KB. This is t- it's going to be hypocritical because I went to the hospital. I forced Jeff <laughs> to drive me to the hospital, but that's because I didn't think I was high. I thought it was something medical, so I feared death and I didn't even think it was a high. That's thing. part of being too high. That's exactly. No, because it was delayed because I've gotten too high and it sucks, but it's more paranoia and discomfort whereas losing your parents as a child is pure fear. Mm-hmm. So I'm going with that. Parents, you get to break the tie big team. You almost exclusively get too high. You're bad enough. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm, u- I'm used to it. But yeah. It's, yeah, it's to a point where I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, I have never been high. It sounds horrible from what all of you have described and like something we should regulate strongly. <laughs> um, so I will go with losing your parents because that's something that, like like KB said, you've, you've got really, you're just on a hope and a prayer there. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's always worse when you're at a theme park. Has that ever happened? Oh, yeah, that would suck. It happened to me. Yeah, once. it's a nightmare at a water park. Water park. You get out, you get off the ride, and like you thought your parents were on one bench, and they yeah. moved to a different bench. Exactly. Yeah. I got off the. It was. It was. You've probably heard of it. Splish splash. Oh, splish splash, legendary. Yeah, amazing. Alien yeah. invasion, Dragon's Den. Dude, I got off of aliens and alien. Inv- no, I was too young for alien invasion. It was one, one of them, like maybe the pistol one, whatever. I got off that. My parents weren't there, and just all these like soaking wet men around. Oh yeah, just like yeah. I'm gonna die. Uh, next, Have you uh, left one of your kids somewhere, Trey? Have you done that yet? No, they're too, too young. Yeah, no. too young for that. Uh, next up, we have uh, the number four seed. And this is I need to combine a few for this one. It's not feeling your phone while it keys when you do the pat. Ooh. You know what I mean, like you pat your your. It could be any combination of them, um, but yeah, just patting and not feeling it. Phone, keys, or wallet, uh, and that's going up into thirteen seed. Missing a step, missing a step, and doing like the <gasps> oh, uh, like stairs. Yeah, on stairs. Yeah, not like missing a. Step. So you think there's one more, or you think there's one less? That's one more or less, either or. Uh, big T. This is tough. Missing the step is scarier in that moment, but not feeling one of the big three is worse. Mm -hmm. Like, I've left this office and realized I didn't have my wallet or, like, AirPods or something, and I'm like, fuck, dude, this whole day is fucked now. I either have to go back or I've left my keys here. That Then you have to come back. So that's worse. I'm going with that because that ruins my day more so it is scary. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe. it's hard to compare with like something that only lasts a split second like missing a stare yeah but that, that jolt, was elongated man. it would be like the worst thing ever if it was like if that was an hour sensation but that jolt though is like insane. but the yeah the the being out and no wallet or phone is i guess it's fear there's a level of fear. I think specifically, it's not, I don't know if it's at home, like, it's, not like, ah, I'm scared. But if you leave it at home, it's different, right? But like, if you like leave up, like you've been out at a couple of bars and you feel, pee, pat your pocket, your keys aren't there. Like, you're like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't know where. Yeah, but it's not, I don't think that's too, that's, that's not like f- fear. It doesn't terror. like terror. So I had once where somebody took my jacket 
which had my keys and wallet in it. And like, I, you, I don't know how to get home. No, you had like incriminating evidence in your wallet or your on your phone. Then yeah, fear. Nothing like that. But it's just like, I, I didn't have any way to get into my apartment because there's like a walk. I'm not a doorman building at the time. So it's like, there's no physical way for me to get into my apartment. And like that is, there's like a level of fear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. At least it, missing that stair, your stomach drops. Yeah. That's fear. That's fear. Going with that. Going to go with missing this step, Jay? Yeah, I think KB's point about the length of time is really good. I think when your phone's gone, like, I feel more anger. Like, I know I left it somewhere. But, yeah, if, you're, if your point is, like, you don't know where it is. Um, I actually lost my wedding ring this weekend, and I was I was not scared. I was more just like, what the fuck? So, like, it more of like a uh, – I found it this morning. Luckily, my son did. But um, it was more of just like a – I wouldn't call it fear, just like annoyance at myself. So I would, I would equate that to the phone. So I would say, yeah, despite the length of time, missing a step. Missing a step. Nick? My, when I misplace one of the, as Big T said, the big three, I, it's pure panic for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, phone, you know, to get home somewhere, to contact anybody, if, even if it's dead. Yeah. You can still call a cab, but um, my ID is expired. So I bring out my passport with me. If I don't feel that, if somebody has that, that's bad news, right? Can't so you have they? the big four. Yeah. Aren't they just me if they have that? Yeah, I think so. I think if they, yeah. No matter what gone. they look like. Yeah, they're just, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah I have this though. Um, And so, and like jolting up in the middle of the night thinking you left your credit card somewhere or like didn't close out a tab. I hate it. Mm-hmm. I'm going with that. Going to go with that, Tommy. Yeah, I'm going to go with that as well. Break the tie. I, I mean, the, the missing a, a step is very scary, but I've been fortunate enough. I don't think I've ever lost a phone, a wallet. I've lost my keys once before, but the I sometimes I put my credit card by accident behind my ID, so I look in my wallet. I don't see it right away. That fear of like, oh, fuck, because it's the impending responsibilities that come with losing one of those things too. It's I got to go cancel my card. I have to go buy a new phone. I got to transfer all my information. Like that moment of panic, the the pant pat check and you yeah don't feel it. i was being too strict with the definition of fear it's it's de- that's definitely worse and it's pure dread right dread so fear, fear scare yeah. panic that that pat to the legs and you don't feel wh- where you're supposed to feel it is yeah. terror like the day to day to it again like if it's like we were saying like you know you left it at home or you know you left it at work it's not nearly as bad it's like annoyance but like if you're out at somewhere else you not as, it doesn't have to be going out to drink or whatever like anywhere you're going out anywhere else outside of the your normal routine and you miss something like yeah you're it's scary feeling that like you do the check on the way to the airport yeah oh, that's yeah. horrible oh no that'll be all i don't want to think about it um although i think the closest feeling to that i had i was going to go to this, this one of the sun's bucks finals games yeah and uh i i was all booked in my flight everything i only ever fly to newark like i I only like flying out of newark really i don't like lj or jfk so i show up at newark and i realized i booked the flight out of jfk jesus Uh, that is that has to be the worst feeling i wanted to die Uh, and there was no way for me to get there in time to get through everything Fucking phoebe and rachel had ass (laughs) they do that it was so bad in the finale yeah they go to the wrong airport so and then i knew Or, or rachel and sorry phoebe and ross there was like That's five different things I knew I had to do. I knew I had to cancel this thing. I needed to try and somehow sell my finals ticket, which was crazy expensive. And like it, everything about it sucked. I think That's worse. I had a very similar thing though. I was going to Canada and I was uh, packing the night before and I packed my passport and realized it was expired. Ooh. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. And there's like, there's just nothing you could do at that point either. Like you can't there is actually. There's a place in New York. KB, I was trying to tell you about this. There's a place in New York City where you can go and they can do same day turnarounds for um, renewing your passport. Really? Yes. Pain in the ass. You got to get there at like five in the morning, and oh. there's a line of like a hundred people. But I, I don't got anything to renew. I got to just get one. Mm. Mm. True, true. But you can get one there. The next matchup we have is um, the number nine seed. Realizing your alarm wasn't on, off, missed it, whatever, anything like that. Like you wake up and yeah. for like regular jobs, it's like you wake up at like 9, 45, 10 and you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm insanely late. Um, that's going up against the number eight seed. When you lean back too far on the chair, oh. the office chair, and you have that split second where it lifts off the ground and like you're about to fall over and just die. Um, so you get to go first, Tommy. Yeah, that. That I mean, the, the alarm is is very scary. Waking up and when you see the time, I was like, well, this is simply too late. Is very scary, but 
the falling back in your chair, like the thought of cracking your head open. I feel like that's a big parent thing where I remember my parents, aunts, uncles always be like, don't lean back on your chair. Don't lean back on your chair. Uh, the the moment it's a more physical like you feel it in your stomach type fear um and obviously the consequences of that going wrong is worse than the consequences of being late to whatever so i'll go with the chair lean back nick when you wake up late until you arrive to that place and are forgiven for being late, oh, you're yeah, in pure yeah. panic. Yep, yep. that uh, that's it's, and everything goes wrong, or at least you get a slow walker in front of you, or you have a family of twelve slow walking Brazilians taking a photo of the Empire State <laughs> Building. It happens Always every time. Brazilians. Yeah. yeah, and it's just you are panicked, and that person's mad at you, and you're lying, saying on your way over text message, yep. and you are still taking a shit. It's like it's the worst. Um, being late or running late, it's purely, se- I'm punctual out of selfish reasons because I hate the feeling of being late. Mm-hmm. Jay. Yeah. I think those are all good points at the same time. Like though, I feel like that feeling is like a, a long period of time from when you don't set your alarm to when you realize it to, you know, when you have to be somewhere and it's just, you're annoyed at yourself and you're mad. I wouldn't say, say it's fear. Um, but the fall dipping too back, dipping too far back in your chair is immediately like, Oh fuck. And that is like, it's, it's very short, but that is, that's going to be hard to beat for me. Wow. How often have you done this? Bunch of times. I'm, I'm a taller person. So as soon as you go even a little bit too far back, it's, you're going over. It's over. All right. KB. Alarm late. Awful feeling, pure dread. You're late for everything. Now it's for things that matter, like oh, yeah. or things that. Uh, Damn. Yeah, you like. <laughs> I think I, my like first or second day at Barstool, I missed like the train to get he- here at the right time, mm-hmm. and I was freaking out, like texting K Marco. <laughs> oh, didn't realize no. that was it's not a thing. Didn't matter, but um, that. All right, that big T. Being late to things is maybe my biggest fear. I am way early to things that I don't even need to be necessarily on time for. Like if I'm going to a baseball game, I'm there an hour early. Here this morning, I was sitting in here at like, we're recording at 10 at 945. I was like, I need to be in there by 945. Like I needed to be here at 10 for this. But I'm just saying in anything in life, I have to be early. So like if I'm late for something, it's legitimately like makes me want to kill myself. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. (laughs) I am with you. Yeah. I want to die. No, I'm early to everything. I think people hate it when they're going with me to things. I think that I'll meet people there. My friends will just meet me there. Yeah, I'm fine going solo. I, th- I think when you're like waiting for 15 to 30 minutes and you're like obviously bored, is you're like this is worth it or dude, you just you wish. Uh, yes. You could oh yeah, it's definitely yeah. worth it. When I get to the airport three hours before the flight and I'm like, I know I'm here. That's totally worth it. If you have a cell phone, there's no reason to be bored. Yeah. Greed. The uh, people saying you're always on their phones. It's a bad thing. It's the best. But when you're, you can't fully enjoy it when you're waiting for something that's about to start. Why? Oh yeah, I can. Do a your crossword? Nah, I'd, I'd rather be in my room. <laughs> oh no way! Doing the same thing. Yeah, it's just a. If like, I was in my room, I'd be like, thinking, I'd rather just be there. Correct. I thinking about there. how you need to be, somewhere. especially for the plane. The plane scenario. It's like, what am I going to be doing? Unless I like truly have something to do, or from at work or something. But if it's a Saturday afternoon, why not just sit in the airport terminal? So I'm I treat sitting in my air- room thinking about, correct. oh my god, every minute I waste could make me miss the plane. Exactly. I treat the airport like going to the mall. I'll go, I'll get Auntie Anne's. Oh, airports I'll shop. Rock. They're the best. But now, being on a plane uh, is different, airport. especially like I hate being on planes. Same. Being in the airport is amazing. If you, if I said this to somebody recently, if I could make the amount of money I make now to sit in an airport from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I'd do it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do. What? The you info, feel yeah. cool in an airport. Too. Oh, airports who, rock. Who, who man on the go. would be paying you to sit there? I don't know. I'm just saying, in this <laughs> mythical okay. scenario. Airports rock. Yes. Uh, the walkways that move for you. It's like, what else do you get that? And every airport. hire like different. models to make it seem like it's like a popping thing. Like airports hire big T. So that yeah. people are like, no, if oh, any airports are listening. Here. It's a good airport. You you just can't quit kicking that over. Move this over here. Uh, but yeah, I'm the same with hotels. I love being in hotels. Incredible. Yeah. But I check out early. I don't wait until, I don't want to get the knock on the door of like, it's time to go. Well, that yeah. goes back to that the, the punctuality issue. Yeah. yeah, I'm not waiting. No, I I leave when it's time to leave. But I leave when I leave when I wake up. 
Yeah, absolutely. But when you're in a hotel, incredible. Oh, I love the hotel. What's your favorite airport stop? Like, where do you like to go in the airport? Not in, like like you're. That's the thing. Like every airport's different. I have a place at each airport. Really, each like, airport. Like in JFK, there's this shitty sports bar that like sucks but is amazing. Uh, I forget what terminal. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I forget what it's called. But it like that rocks. Um, in LaGuardia, just that little new food court area with the fountains. I'll sit Great. there and watch it spell it's beautiful. Manhattan, Bronx, Queens. Yeah. I'll even stay for Staten Island if you I'm stay for it. Staten. Yeah, I love the I fountain. Do. Just every uh, there's a Wendy's there, there's a Dunkin', you get whatever you want. Donald's. There's a place that has Ritz yeah. Bits cheese snack you can't find everywhere. Uh, airports rock. I buy a uh, whatever city I'm in. I'm buy I buy that team's apparel. Really? Do you yeah. really? Yeah. You're staying there. Or you just fly into the airport. Uh, when I'm leaving, we're going, yeah, when I'm leaving. So I just had, I got a New Orleans Saints one. I got like a Charlotte Motor Speedway one. Got to do what you got to do. Got it all. Uh, all right. Next matchup is the number one seed versus our chain. We can do the chain first. Um, being stuck in a confined space with Tico, Texas as our team sweeps yours out of the LCS. Uh, I did not submit this one. No, he didn't. Um, when you realize that although your actions were gutsy, you're staring down the barrel of 158 pounds of Taiwan Claxton, and he's about oh. to embarrass you on the National Collegiate Wrestling stage. A fair addition, and I'll get into that. <laughs> Realizing you didn't take the meat out that your mom asked you to. Oh, you fuck. Out. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, the luggage, this is yours, Tommy. The luggage taking way too long coming out of the carousel. The oh, yeah, being afraid that you lost your luggage when like everybody else is getting their luggage, and yours is like, uh-oh. Well, yeah. that that's horrifying uh checking your text slash social media the morning after a blackout um this applies more like to earlier days but yeah um the missing college exam nightmare or high school test oh, whatever yeah. um slipping on ice and doing that like dance thing you know <laughs> i like that <laughs> you like doing that yeah i'm just afraid i'm gonna fall it's like it's like basically the missing the step phenomenon except yeah it lasts longer. that's it's similar to that it's, it's similar to the lean it's pretty back on a chair scary. yeah Except that I feel like it, it lasts longer than both of those yeah. things almost into, always. So, um, and the last one, um, when you're showing something to your friend and they keep scrolling past something, you know what I mean? Oh, like, uh, when well, you like, hand it your hey, phone. Hey, look at this picture. And then they like, they somehow scroll past whatever it is. Yeah. You're looking, you're like, oh. I, that makes me irate. Mm -hmm. Someone grabs my phone and starts doing things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So we'll pick through these again. I'll give you the full list. Uh, being stuck in a confined space at Tico, Texas for the ALCS. Uh, having to face Taiwan Claxton when you're down about how many pounds on him? I mean, realistically, it was not much. <laughs> um, it wasn't much. Um, realizing that you didn't take the meat out, uh, the luggage taking too long in the carousel, uh, checking your text and social media, uh, missing your college exam, nightmare, slipping on ice and doing the dance, or someone scrolling past when you're trying to show them something on your phone. These are all really good. Yeah, Tommy, you get to go first. Hmm, this is tough. The the fe like I don't have anything to hide on my phone. Um, but the idea of anyone else, nobody should ever have my phone in their hands. But you have a video of you doing an Indian accent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about to say, I was like the one thing that maybe I was self conscious of, I just showed to the world regardless. <laughs> um, but. If I ever lost my luggage, I think I'd kill myself. Mm. If I ever lost like ever all my medications, all my clothes, maybe a laptop if you have it in there, that I don't know if it's fear, but like seeing everybody else's luggage and it's like, all right, I've been here for you hate minutes. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you hate, hate them. them. Everyone that gets it before you is a piece of shit. That's yeah. what they are. And and sitting there and being like, well, I'm doing the math. Like th my luggage should have been out by now. Everybody else I saw on the plane, they're leaving. That has really bad consequences too, uh, so I'll go. I'll go with that. I'll go with the not seeing your luggage come out. In my brain, it's almost like I just had an apartment fire because, like, everything I right. care about it's, is it is. Life. That's basically what it is. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, I don't have uh, medications, but I'm so afraid of flying and the relief I get from landing, and if it's a vacation and my luggage isn't there, it's ruined. I've never had my luggage lost, so I feel like I'm due. Yeah, probably. I, I never have either. I one time in senior year when I went to Vegas for the gambling run with Dave, I flew from Vegas to Newark for a connection, then to Jamaica to meet my friends in oh, in uh, spring break. And I wanted to keep my bag as a carry-on, but they made me check it at the gate. And I was like, there's just simply no way this bag ends up in Jamaica or oh, no, Bahamas. Uh, but it did. 
but that was the closest really? ever. Like that whole fear, all I could think of for those 12 hours, I was like, there's just no way that my bag ends up at the airport in the Bahamas. There's no way. And that fear is, it's, it's horrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ruins the flight. Um, like in losing all of your clothes, when you're traveling, you pack your steeziest fits. Yep. Your best ones. Mm-hmm. And so that would suck. Starting from, ah, starting with a clean slate would be cool. Actually, it kind of happened to me. I uh, you're not getting. Money, I sent my though. clothes to the cleaner with a big thing of chapstick, the big Carmex, and it just everything has like an nope. oil stain that's uh, in the center now. So I had to tr- had to get rid of a lot of stuff. So you're going with the luggage? Yeah, another one for the luggage, Jay. Sorry, um, <laughs> you want to cut that, Dave? Jay? <laughs> you get a Dave text. Yeah, you got to take a pause. But no. um, assuming you're picking I actually, I actually have a uh, no. I, I I have a uh, a story about. Um, uh, why you should never check your bag if you have a connecting flight. So I was actually going to the Arizona Bowl. We were playing in trivia, and I decided to go out early. It was the week of, like, Christmas break, so I was going to go have a couple days with my wife and then go to the game. And we flew, and we had to make a very weird emergency landing. We took a direct flight from Newark to Phoenix. We had to make, uh, they called it, like, an early landing to, like, refuel. It sounded like an emergency landing. They, they just ran out of fuel. So we had to <laughs> land in El Paso. My nightmare. Un- unscheduled landing in El Paso. And the woman directly in front of me p- calls the stewardess over, and uh, or the flight attendant over, and says, uh, hey, like I'm actually flying to El Paso. Can I just get off oh. here? <laughs> the flight attendant goes, did you check a bag? And she goes, yes. She's like, then you, you can't get off. So That's this woman had to sucks. wait for the flight plane to refuel, which took quite a bit of time we didn't get in the air like an hour later fly to phoenix and then fly directly back to el paso because so, she checked a bag so you're saying don't check a flight if you have a connecting flight just yes. in case you have an emergency landing in the city that <laughs> your flight is ending yeah. up at because she could have gotten off <laughs> that <laughs> reminds point. me actually of a spider store i don't think he's here to tell it himself but we went to the super bowl for fordham back, back in college we went to minnesota we we're flying back Minnesota, New York, and we had to like book our own flights and pay for it. So he used this like bootleg website. It was called like Skip Jet, Skip Lag. No, yes, I remember that. Where basically it's like it it makes it. Let's say if you're going from Minnesota to New York, you book a ticket that's basically Minnesota to like North Carolina, something that would be cheaper that has a connecting flight mm-hmm. through New York, and it's and then obviously you just get off at the New York flight and you don't go on the connecting flight, and it's somehow cheaper than if you were just going from Minnesota to New York. The catch is obviously if you check a bag it doesn't work we were like the last row on the plane spiders are like, i'm not going to check the bag they were out of room they're like you have to check the bag oh. so he's like fuck so he checks the bag and says, i don't know what i'm gonna do we land in new york his his luggage is going to get shipped to north carolina or wherever it was and he starts dming delta and is like oh. is like uh, i'm ha- i'm a diabetic having an attack right now and my medicine is in my bag like i need the agents to get it out at the new york airport like i need my medication i need my insulin or whatever and i'm like there's no way this is going to work so we get off at the carousel or get off we're waiting at the carousel there's a bunch of bags coming out not his and then you just hear a loud beep Everything stops. The whole carousel stops, and just one bag shoots down. Oh. <laughs> <And> it's <spiders. laughs> It was like a, it was incredible that it actually worked. Yeah, but uh, that's maybe why you don't use that website. Yeah, uh, it's it's illegal to do now. That really, it's like it really? shut down. Yeah, ah, that uh, makes sense. Airlines put their foot down. Mm. That makes sense, I guess. They're having a lot of like empty flights to small cities, and yeah, it doesn't make sense the way they structure that. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, none of that has ever even crossed my mind, but the ice dance, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to b- fall and bonk your head. Mm-hmm. That's how the uh, creator, I think, the Atkins diet died. Mm-hmm. He slipped on ice? Yeah. You, yeah, you know that life, eat, there's no. a real chance yeah. you're yeah. going to yeah. hurt diet. yourself, and you're probably in public. No yeah. one's watching, but the, no, I have a horror story of letting my friends use my iPod or iPad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yep. and yeah, I remember something. this. Yeah, I can't even say it. I can't, I'm not going to verbalize it, but it's it's the phone. You have to. I mean, it'd be, for me, Tommy show yeah, I just showed doing an Indian. Video. No, because if, no, if I told... It was Russian. I think it if was I Russian. told the real story, I, I just can't because the person... Yeah, I can't let them know. Can you give okay. an abridged? Or like a... a redacted Doe type story? You know what I mean? No, not right now. Okay. <laughs> no, but trust me, it's it's that. It's going with the picture. Is it mortifying? Can you tell us? Yeah, it, it's way worse than like something like conventionally terrible. It's the worst that you can think of, like <laughs> weird porn. 
it's worse because there was like a personal connection. Yeah. Okay, I get yeah. what you're saying. All right. Nothing I did was bad morally. I'm taking it like they texted a girl or something. It, it was yeah. It was bad. no, not no. They didn't do anything. What is what they saw? I was like looking up. Oh. Okay. Can you tell us and we'll cut it? I have to know. Yeah. 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 Can you take a note of the gooch of the time. I'll, I'll cut it. Okay. It's, I I know. No, I'll tell you after. Okay. Yeah. He's not afraid of it. It's actually not that bad. It's just embarrassing. It brings me so much pain to even think about. Does it keep you up at night still? No, but if I do think about it, um, I like let out like a, ah. <laughs> How long ago? Was audibly, this? audibly. You, College, junior year, maybe. You can't. No, oh, that's around the time when you Facetime on Claxton too, and that that's worse. That was junior year as well. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's a tough year. eventful year. Yeah. Uh, again, that was a I came. That was a, a good good night for me oh, the, the night that you got destroyed by Taiwan Clax your parents like, like a regular dad text him like yeah good good job hmm. I think he probably did wait does Big T even know the story about Taiwan Claxton no clue I mean you should... I, I can gather Taiwan Claxton he that year he beat Drake how Shelt, who ended up winning the national title so he was like a top five top ten guy I bumped up to face him and only gave up a regular decision instead of a major decision technical fall or pin Got it. Pretty good. Double weight classing so and got, got crushed. Do you think he remembers you? We, we know each other. Oh. We, we used to run. We went back to fucking high school, the North Canton, like Hoover Classic. He's a UFC fighter now, right? I think so, mm-hmm. unless he quit. But he was good. Big T, what are you picking among the options? My, uh, you said your mom tells you to get something out of the fridge. Mine was always laundry. She'd be like, can you switch out the laundry? I'd be like, yeah, I'll do that in 10 minutes. And then... She gets home and I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, I, I totally didn't do that. Uh, but I found myself thinking about what would have happened if I had to watch the World Series last year with Tico, Texas. Mm. And I was like, I actually would have taken my own life. <laughs> so it's that win or lose. Like, how do you think your boy Smitty is going to fare? Smitty, Smitty, like, goes into another, Dimension, like, basically. zone when he's doing that shit. So he'll actually, like, I think he will take her down. I think Whoa. I think Philly Mays is the guy who's going to take it the worst. Uh, yes, yes, for yeah, because sure. he's never had to do yeah. shit like that. So yeah, Smitty will be fine because he goes into like character. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, All I right. think what, right. the situation that brought most fear re- revolving Tico Tex anyway was when you guys were at the Yankee game with specifically. Her was, yeah, that that uh, watching it with her other people in, in the TV, it, whatever, and here was whatever. Being at the Yankee game with her and being like that's I, dangerous. Like, I, when yes. she's in the aisle. And everyone's chaining asshole at her, and she's like, fuck you, Houston Rocks. That fear, that terror. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't be responsible for Tico, Texas, getting assaulted. And they hate but I'm you also not going to step her. in. So you were. You were afraid of that because yeah. we warned you that that was going to be an issue. I, 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 so I was afraid like once the entire game because luckily it was a pretty uneventful game. There was once in the sixth inning where she was like really dancing, but like looking around our section, we were in a pretty relatively tame yeah. section you're in the bleachers but there was once where people were chanting asshole and i was like this could take a turn i was like reel it in tico this could take a turn yeah i, I do think she can't do philly that's not yeah but i i went to one of the braves games there with smitty the most hostile mean crowd i've <laughs> ever been to in my life and you're a big man yeah and i was like not saying anything to anybody like i was just minding my own business and people were being assholes if they go to a game in philly i would love to see it actually mm. <laughs> <laughs> Something will happen. Can't predict what's going to happen. I think the winner, though, is going to be the luggage taking too long because you two both voted for it. Oh, yeah. Only one to get two votes. And that's going up against uh, the number one seed. Almost everyone replied to this on Twitter. Um, Getting the we need to talk text. Mm. Getting the talk. And this is also, I'm going to include onto this the getting the all caps call me from a parent. I don't know if you ever got this. Call me now or the unexpected call from a parent as well, just in general. Uh, So we need to talk. Slash call me going up against not being able to find your luggage. Uh, let's start with you, Big T. Yeah, it's a, that's a text slash call you never want to get. Either somebody's died, you're about to get like broken up with. Stomach yeah. drops. Yeah, nothing good is going to happen. So uh, luggage, things can be replaced. Human lives, however, uh, much more hard to come by. Mm-hmm. So Maybe. Yeah, that is cr- it's debilitating. You can't do or think or focus on anything until you get to the bottom of it. Yep. It makes you like stop it. Like, just tell me what it is. Just tell me what it is now. Like, I need to know what it is this minute. Yeah, it's fucked yeah. up of them to send that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so two for that, Jay. 
Yeah, I had the, the call me now text is that's a heart stopper. Or even if you just say like, "Hey." Yeah, how um, Owen is the yo, worst. Owen that. does it all the time. Sorry. Just yo, no. and I'm like, "Fuck." What? Why are we wasting? Oh, texts? I don't think that that's weird at all. Why? That's you don't need to send yo on a text message. You know, I'm gonna ask yo, yeah, what's like, up? What do you? It need? just skips a lot of. It just yeah. no, it just, just say it. adds a lot of extra steps. Just yeah, say it off oh. the bat. Additional tension. You've done this too, Chase. So Chase, I understand why he's a little. Uh, I send yo, yeah. So he's every night. What's I get going through your head, like Walker. It's not why say just yo. What do you, it's more of like an instantaneous, like, hey, I want to make sure you're there. I want to, I want to run something by you really quick, as opposed just run to run it by. You could just say, yeah, they'll oh, be there no, eventually. No, 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 no yeah. because it might be something that I'm looking for, like in the moment, like, hey, like it could be something. Say the like, like, yo, I have a question about blank, or I have something to tell yeah. you about blank. If you're, I mean, you gotta KYP know your personnel. Like, I'm not, I'm not sending you a text to be to be like, hey, I'm dying, like. But still, you could your mind just right, it just cr- creates an uncomfortable. I will say, situation. Stephen Shea texted me, "Hey, hey, wouldn't oh like, him no wouldn't no. scare me? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. No. yeah, you're right. You yeah. keep, what is oh, Stephen got about hey, to yeah, tell right. me? Hey is just annoying. My girlfriend, I tell her every time, please stop doing this. She still does it. She just texts, hey, and then you know I need freak <laughs> out. Oh yeah, I just have to say, what do you want? And then she <laughs> tells me, <laughs> yeah, you could have just done that oh, the first time. And you're Blood the bad love if you were my boy. And you're the fucking bad guy. Yeah, no, the, you'd be the perfect boyfriend. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, it's the fucking it's worst. what it is. What do you want? <laughs> just tell me what you need. You, you did that to me the other day, or a few weeks ago, where you were just like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what's about to happen? And you were just like, I'm, I'm sick. Can I, like, video into the bracket? And I was like, yeah. Like, the way that, it, but the, that intro part, I was like, something really bad is that I'm about to be told. You know what I mean? So, that's where I think where it comes in for me. Uh, Nick. Have you ever gotten, can we talk later? Oh, I- Oh, that's worse. Uh, yeah. That yeah. freezes you for no. that's, hours. That's like exclusively a relationship thing though, right? No, because so like here's the like thing. A, like a boss. When you get a can we talk in a relationship, you, a you should know that you that have a nice coming to an end. Mm-hmm. Right. I think it's, it's almost there's, like there's giveaways from a, from a, a boss or a, a parent. Boss or family is what I was going to those are wor- like if it's like if a girl says hey can we talk it's like you might as well just be like, all right see ya like you just know it's over like <laughs> the, the, there's more possibilities with with another person a boss uh, like an email of like hey can we meet later this week can we talk this week yeah. when you know you haven't done anything in seven months mm-hmm. uh, and you have to yeah it sucks uh, what I realize I do too is sometimes with my girlfriend I'll be like can I admit something to you uh, I know it freezes her as well, and then I'll be I'll say some dumb shit like I don't know what validating parking means, which is true. I still don't know what that means. Extra girlfriend net right now, and just be like I gotta come clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's his What's his follow? No, start out with hey. <laughs> you torment this Jeez. woman. She she's texted me like she's now quad. Uh, Quint texted. Yeah, dude, you're giving thoughts. her blue dots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, oh, man. She's You're like a asking dickhead. me really long questions. She knows I'm in the middle of the... Those, like, those could be... Yeah, those are in a yeah. consecutive time... Sp- yeah, Is that cool. your work computer? Yes. You have your personal iMessages on your work computer? That's a wild move. I, I don't do it. He can read it. I don't say... I don't send anything racy oh, that's at That's wild. I don't want to know. Well, you're, that's because you're sending your girlfriend, what do you want? No, I don't want anything I say read by, like, anyone. Do you I think really they right. do you think no one actually don't look at my texts. It? Oh yes. I, I don't know cuz I would. I would. <laughs> in the lecture halls, I would. The person sitting next to me I'd read their whole conversation. I mean, who has who has No, the, no, no. Yeah. You think like Pete and and oh, whoever that. is oh, like the, going no. in and like is saying, it oh, Pete that has I don't know, probably not. Is it Peter is it Greer that has access? Oh, if Greer has access. There's no way Greer has access. You, I hope. Yeah. I uh, I hate when like the Verizon or whoever worker takes your phone back. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. No, <laughs> I hate that so much. I don't use iMessage like on my computer. I, I don't either. Exclusively, you guys are making me regret having it on my computer. I just it's easy. I just don't know like, how. I just, I, rather I, I the government's faster. looking, your employers looking, everyone on the looking phone at your too. Phone? The government's not looking at your phone. Yeah. Correct. Well, yeah, but they've already got your phone. Mm-hmm. But so I don't like, want the difference yeah. between that and the computer. The fewer people reading messages my shit, both. the better. But the same exact messages are on both. Which is if you have iMessage up on your computer and I walk by. I'm looking. Okay, she said what? And just be like, I Did need you to just come, say need, hey, or I need to come, hey. say I need to come clean. And then when she says what again, just say never mind. 
<laughs> I need, never mind. We'll I talk. Say, later. I need to come clean about. Yeah. Some, never mind. I need we'll to talk come later. clean about something. About something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> She's about to oh, get. Oh fucking dude. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is stupid. I regret it already. <laughs> you should regret this. Why are you listening to us? <laughs> she said, "What this is, is the impractical jokers meme? Text your girlfriend that you need to talk about." <laughs> yeah, she something. just responded, "What is this bit?" So I think she might be uh, onto us. Oh. <laughs> She's she like, "I've I've pumped her radar up so wow. high, especially since that last time that like I recorded her when I gave her a fake lottery ticket that won her fifty grand." Yeah, oh that was a moment gosh. where she was like. I need to be constantly on guard. Should I just say I need to talk to you? You didn't even. She wanted a kitten for. You surprised her with a kitten too. You can't even like do nice things normally. Yeah, no, and she was mad when I did that. Yeah, too. she like slammed the door open. Okay, she's typing again. Oh man, I don't even know what this. <laughs> all right, was. all right, Joe. Now, uh, say, <laughs> say uh, remember when I was out of town a few weeks ago? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> she says I know you're recording yeah. the bracket, so yeah. Oh, <laughs> fucking yeah. smart. She's too smart for me, man. Good shit. Um. Okay. What if, not you, what if you really back? were like about to tell her that you cheated on her and she's like, oh, you're just doing the you're bracket. Doing bit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I tried. <laughs> I tried to tell you. I'll, I'll throw in, never mind, we'll talk about it later. No, no, don't. Don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So wait, we're on Nick, right? For um, the luggage or we need to talk? It's we need to talk. Yeah. We need to talk. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah. Agree. The, the possibilities of that. Like I said, it's worse if it's not. If it's a girl, you just know it's bad. Yeah, you know it's bad. The the possibilities of it coming from anyone, or you know, I mean, this is a very specific fear. But like last summer, when I when I knew I was needed on the Dave Portnoy show the next day, yeah. that fear, I I spent. I was like, what have I ever done in my entire life? Like I I went through everything I've ever done. Mm-hmm. I was like, what have I done? It was that I hooked up with the six four girl at the Jersey Shore. So <laughs> six four. That's how. No, tall that she was like six one. But that was the the story go. As was she in heels. Goes. She was six one flat footed. Uh in heel, sure, six four. Jesus. That's like fucking me, Tommy. I wish, brother. Uh, that's big big T territory right there. Do you remember that time that we asked? Wait, wait, wait. Who's six one? How tall do you think I am? No, no, I'm saying that you were the one that wanted to fuck Nick. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well if it, that was gay. If push wasn't came gay. to shove. You were like but you answered so quickly. Why are we bring like, force into this? Like what? <laughs> Out of, shoving all, him down. out of all the people that were on that show, if I had to fuck one of them, it would be Nick. I appreciate that. And you said it was because he would make the situation funny. You're making this weird, Ken Jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, that's going to move on. Let's get into the other half of our bracket. Uh, and let's hear from our next sponsor, Ridge. All right, let's talk about Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet is an ultra slim minimalist wallet that holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, and they're made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. And they also have a new key case to help organize your keys. It secures anywhere from 2 to 12. Shit, sorry, Gooch. There's... What the fuck, dude? Okay. All right, let's talk about Ridge Wallet. It... All right, let's talk about Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet is an ultra-slim minimalist wallet. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. And they also have a new key case to help organize your keys. It holds anywhere from two to six keys and organizes them in a compact silhouette with fold-out for really easy access. There are six colors and styles, including the carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I'm recording this after the uh, after we finish the episode of The Bracket, but if you're watching this episode of The Bracket, you're going to see both me and Nick pull out our Ridge uh, key case holders, which are awesome. I hate carrying on keys because they just bunch up in your pocket and they stab your legs and all that crap. Having them, I just have my my four most important keys in my little key card seat, or, or I think we're calling it a key case, and it just goes in the pocket, nice and smooth, really easy to carry. Uh, and you're also going to see Big T pull out his Ridge wallet. Um, again, with the key case, get all the same colors as you're getting from the Ridge wallet. So if you want to if you want to go check out the site, go to Ridge.com and use code LCB for 10% off your order. Thanks to Ridge, I do I have my. I just did the pat, and I didn't have. The, wait, I do have it. You have the key. I have the key. Oh, he's got the wallet. And you got the wallet. He's got the wallet. Of course. I got the key. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The key rocks. Yeah, it's fun. It's so fun to fiddle with too. Mm-hmm. Look at that shit. Nice. Um. Anyway, the on the other half of our bracket, we have the number eleven seed. Looking up anything on WebMD. Um, oh, look up boy. anything on WebMD boy. just makes. Um, it's oh just a, boy, this was my submission. <laughs> really? Yeah. Your submission. You might have had it too. I think I had waiting for test results from a doctor. Okay. Well, this is even worse. This is even You're worse. The one this is worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's going up against the number sixty. This is from Nick. Um, <laughs> when you hear this is your captain speaking on a plane and it's a woman's voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I don't know that that's ever happened to me, but that would be the worst. Yeah. Ever. That's, a, <laughs> that's such I'd a get unbelievable get scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even wrap my head around that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Tommy, you go first. Oh, uh, it's WebMD. I I really in like February, whenever I had my cyst that I had removed that I thought was um soft tissue scarcoma. I legitimately, I don't, I can't tell you the last time I cried, but I really came close to crying myself to sleep one night. I was like, this is it. I looked up, I was like, I got the symptoms. This feels different in my heart of hearts. This is different. I'm dying. I'm going to die at a young age. Like I'm going to go through a long battle that, and it's for, you know, it's that it's for little things. You have a stomach pain and you have colon cancer, you have whatever it is. It is the worst possible scenario Maybe not everyone's like that. Maybe it's because I'm a massive hypochondriac, but I, I do think there is something just innate to human nature of you, you're going to assume the worst sometimes in, in those scenarios. There, There is not a woman pilot in the world. So but that's like <laughs> saying like, oh, Frankenstein. Like, would you be scared of Frankenstein? There's uh, only one woman pilot. Yeah, that is. <laughs> There's only one woman pilot and she's famously lost. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, they put an end to that real quick. Uh, so I'll go with uh, WebMD. WebMD, Nick. So I think WebMD on doesn't it use a scale of how accurate they think it is, and it's only out of three. So like constipation <laughs> is three, and then colon cancer is one, but it's still like just it's Not still a it's a large yeah. sliver yeah. still, and it sucks. And I don't know why I do it. Uh, my mom still to this day will scream at me if I, she finds out I use it. Um, can't do it. Can't do WebMD. I'm sure it's a good resource resource for like level-headed people it is for like finding out like symptoms of oh like why is this the flu or like but it's not fine with flu symptoms but like body something like, yeah like uh okay i had a pain here like they're gonna make you dead yeah you're yeah. fucked yeah uh che um is webmd versus which one sorry a female captain of your plane uh a lot of thought. Uh, thinking. <laughs> you ever look out your window when you have a female pilot and you're just at a Starbucks drive thru? <laughs> uh, the candle aisle. <laughs> you're in the candle aisle? The fuck? <laughs> um, for the sake of more good banter, let's put the, the, the female pilot through. Uh, <laughs> female pilot, KB. Yeah, I'm just, I just can't really I'm trying to picture like that being a, a girl pilot. <laughs> it's hard. That's like the class clown of flight attendant school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would think. Um, uh, yeah, I want to put that through. Ooh, Charlie from Top Gun. Char uh, she was not a pilot. She was a. In, she was a. She worked for like the Pentagon. You're talking about the uh, the girl from yeah. Top Gun One, right? Yeah. She wasn't a pilot. She just worked for the like the well, wasn't she like so good that she at uh, flying that she graduated to that like level no she's like an engineer oh okay yeah not a fly although there were girl pilots in top and we of, all that's why we know it's a movie amelia Earhart is like the, one of the only women we learned about yeah as a pilot yeah. no women, women only women like she yeah. she's her helen keller her, susan b anthony <laughs> helen keller yeah three women um good at anything but then like the the tubman in the area tubman yeah tubman parks keller Earhart. You know, I just learned uh, that there was a teenager who did the same thing that Rosa Parks did like a couple months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, got, like yeah. no fanfare. Oh, Claud Claudia or Claudette something. Claudette Colvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, what so the hell? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? You're going with the captain, uh, Big T. Yeah, I mean, come on. Y'all, you know this is scarier because y'all have me thinking about the next flight I'm going to get on <laughs> if it's a woman captain. What what if, and what if do? she sounds hot? Then you know. That's worse. <laughs> then I'm going to fuck her brains out. <laughs> yeah. No, that's even worse. I know. Local man tries to invade. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that. if you look up on WebMD, there's a 99% chance that whatever's wrong with you, you're going to be completely fine. If you hear that this is your captain speaking in a high-pitched voice, there's a larger chance than not you will not be fine. True. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> hey. This is your captain speaking. I'm a, I didn't I'm sound like, like oh, it didn't sound like a woman. I'm imagining like terrorists about to like they they like storm the cockpit and they see it's a woman's pot and they're just like, well, this will take. They just care leave. Of <laughs> you don't need to this do anything here. This plane will take itself down. <laughs> uh, all right, next up we have uh, Google saying 29 percent of all pilots are women. I've never Zero had a female pilot. Uh, pilots. Uh, pilots. Twenty nine. I think it's because the military? cockpits are smaller and it's like women are smaller built. 
but yeah. What? what? <laughs> could fit in the cockpits. So all the small, like what? Yeah. Like gerrymandering? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like gerrymandering. Uh, the next one we have. You, you, uh, hear get a, you, you hear your plane getting honked at in midair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, n- <laughs> next up, we have the number three seed. Um, Oopsies. <laughs> you pop a curb. <laughs> you're hearing a doorbell knock when you're not expecting one. Oh. Or a doorbell ring when you're not expecting one. Especially when you're younger, it makes it ten times worse. That's exciting when you're younger. Oh, the doorbell rang at my apartment. If I'm home alone as a kid and the doorbell rings unexpected, it's like, oh, this is it. I just have an escape plan in my house, just in case. What was it? What was the escape plan? Just hide in this closet. (laughs) (laughs) That's not escape at all. (laughs) It's the opposite. It's the opposite of escape. Shit. All right. uh, And that's going up against the number four. 14 seed, which is a, is a Nick edition. We talked about it the other day. The scene in Signs, where the oh. walks by. Oh, fuck. Bominos children. Mm-hmm. The little, yeah, that, that one. Seen. I remember, yeah. Did you Watching see that for the first Wait, time. Wait, say that again? Did you ever see the movie Signs? No. There's a very scary scene <laughs> with an alien, so let that be your... your first problem. time you see the alien in the Not movie. A, but it's very well done. You don't just oh, yeah. see the alien's face. You see the alien like walk by. and then Horrifying as a kid. S-I-G-N-S. Yeah. yeah. And, um... This is the first time you see it. This movie came out when we were kids, and two thousand. It's horrifying because it was a PG movie, wasn't it? There was like it was no, like, no, like, definitely not. Like, he pours PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah, PG thirteen. Me, but it's bloodless. Like they just pour yeah. water on them or whatever, and they die. Two thousand two. Damn, y'all Spoiler. are old as fuck. Yeah, yeah. It was my tenth birthday party. We watched it. Oh, then you're not that old. I was. How old did you think we were when you watched this? Y'all said like high school. I bet you. Oh was, no no, just we were kids. Probably we were under kids, ten. Kids. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean it, it was out on DVD. I wasn't so ten. Yet, it was two thousand three. So. Horrifying. Okay. I'm watching it right now. N- one of my f- least favorite scenes ever, it, w- which went on to traumatize me for a while, is in that movie as well, but not that. Which scene? Which scene? Is when the guy got hit by the car. He was pinned oh, against that's the, the tree beginning of the movie. The beginning. Alive. It was the wife. He right? was a, he was pinned, or was it a it was, girl? It was Mel, Mel Gibson's wife. Okay, yeah, she was pinned against the tree, alive, knowing like you're. As soon as the car backs up, you're gonna just die. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. I always feared that happening to me. Mm, getting pinned. Uh, so the scene from Signs <laughs> where the door will knock. Uh, Tommy, we'll start with you as. I, I just watched it. Uh, it did nothing for me. It's the first time you see the alien in the movie. I get uh, I the guess build up. And, you know, seems like more of a had to be there type deal. Uh, <laughs> what was the first one? Uh, I wasn't there. A doorbell. Movie. Doorbell knock when you're not expecting one. Oh yeah, I hate that shit. I've I've also uh, just real quick. According to the International Society of Women Airline Pilots, uh, in 2020, only five percent of pilots were women and 1.4 percent of captains. Okay, so right. that checks out. Statistical anomaly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, doorbell or knock, I I can't fucking stand that shit. Mm. Unexpected doorbell, KB. Do we have any or any of these about cops? Because that would be my number one or two. You're afraid of cops? When you're in a situation like when I've been arrested and I've been close to being arrested, and that's a that's up there. Okay, we'll we'll talk about that in the next in the next one. Cops more, but yeah. yeah. So, uh, which you're picking the doorbell knock? Facing what? Signs alien. Scene. Oh yeah, the signs alien. <laughs> the signs alien. Jay, this is tough because the signs alien is great, and I became a fan of M Night Shyamalan after that movie, which didn't really turn out well. Uh, but the doorbell, I I can recall like two or three instances where when I was like teenager or younger, and the doorbell rings and no one's home except me, and then you're just like, who the fuck is that? The most recent time, this wasn't when I was a teenager, but I was watching my uh, now wife had like a work event or something in the city and I was watching a scary movie. I was watching Sh- the, the Shining mm-hmm. by myself in the apartment, lights off. Scary ass movie. Don't have any friends in the, in, the, in the building and someone knocks on the door like right before one of the, the creepy scenes. Uh, terrifying. Definitely did not answer the door in any, in any of those situations. Um, so that would uh, be my vote and with a door one is a scary movie one makes you feel like you're in the sc- yeah you're in your part of it. yes i was always so excited for when the doorbell rang i don't know if that's because i was what sheltered. experiences did you guys have yeah i, I know. was never like oh that's that's a normal thing people come to your house yeah well i'm Wasn't thinking that? more home alone you're not expecting Still, yes. we grew up in like in neighborhoods that were like yeah, we had open, neighbors, neighbors yeah neighbors always come with, over go, yeah mm, no it was a, it was an exciting <laughs> I was always time. scared yeah i was, I was always scared at a knock when i wasn't expecting one 
Uh, so you're going with... I'm going with... It's the scariest... Th- I said parentheses when I submitted this must be one seed. Had because this is the scariest <laughs> thing in the <laughs> world. <laughs> I had to bump it down a little. Uh, Tommy? No, I'm going I'm going with the knock. for the. Re- that was my biggest fear as a, as a kid, as a home invader. I mean, he, actually, I'm now, living in an apartment building where it's like you got a doorman, I'm on like a higher floor. Like there's... Like if someone comes to my apartment... I should know. Like, I should have got right. a ring yeah. that it's like, oh, food delivery is coming or whatever. You have a friend coming here, coming up. If someone knocked on my door now, I'd be like, how? And I wasn't expecting something. I think that would say, that would almost be. It would just scary. be like your neighbor or something asking. No, 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 no. I have a strict no neighbors. I, uh, since it's eliminated, I can say this now. Uh, I used to, I tried to, before the Harlem Shake, like when I was posting videos on Facebook, I tried to get signs walking to be a trend. So like you'd be in the distance, somebody would be filming and you like walked between things. Like the aliens <laughs> fall into your closet. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, the doorbell knock is going to move on. Next up, we have the number 10 seed versus the seven. Um, we'll talk about maybe subbing one of these in with cops because I do feel like that should probably be on here and there's not really one specifically for cops. Um, the number 10 seed was just like... When you get a random body pain, you think you're about to die. I don't know if that's something oh, that's universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chest, especially. Yeah, like, well, oh, yeah. yeah, not like in your arm or something. Like, you get like anything here, and you get like a really big, like a jolt. Like, you're, you're, I'm, I'm, it's toast. I'm toast. Um, and that's going up against the number seven seed. I feel like we have enough plane stuff, but turbulence scares the fuck out of me. Like, because I hate uh, flying. I hate turbulence so much. Um, but if you're to your, what we were saying before, we could sub one of these in for just like interactions with cops. This um, might be my privilege showing, but when I see a cop, I'm like, all right, situ- <laughs> situation <pal. laughs> saved. I'm thinking about like an officer <laughs> underage <laughs> drinking and like the cop comes yeah. to like bust the party or you got drugs in your pocket and there's a cop right by you. Yeah. I don't break the law, so. So. Can't relate. <laughs> so should we Or if, uh, one of the l- scariest moments of my life is when I hit someone's car oh yeah no I this did that was I, I was doing a home visit at my last job so i had to like do services for the for that family mm-hmm. and I pull in for the first time rear end the car and i'm and i'm like, what, what do i do do i mention yeah. it yeah and i'm like sitting thinking and then i i see like the curtain open up th- and they definitely heard it yeah <laughs> and then in my job if you get in a car accident like the la- someone did it and you have to get like a drug test and all this mm-hmm. she was cool about it though okay Looked out, I guess. Um, so, what, do we want to sub in the cop interaction with, for turbulence or no? Because I, I like, I think I don't think I'd vote for either against. Uh, yeah, I feel I, I feel okay around cops. Mm. You feel good. You feel. I've gotten pulled over and had to have my whole car checked because I was a su- suspected drug dealer. I was driving suspiciously. You just have. You're, the, you're an awful, awful, awful driver. Well, I, you're yeah, the worst I was doing laps around Kent. Like I kept pulling over and like. <laughs> parking lots or like fast food places because I, I was listening for, to music yeah. i wasn't going anywhere this i love doing delivery they man? thought for sure i had drugs i like checked my whole car my trunk like three cops more cops came that happened when you were delivery man though no just oh. a student yeah that happened to, to do that all the time my best friend he had a shitty minivan and he put stickers on it to make it look like the mystery machine from scooby-doo sure most recognizable vehicle in mount julia tennessee by a long shot <laughs> yeah and he got pulled over all, every time I was with him, we got pulled over. Mm. If it was after like 8 p.m., I guess they thought he was like a drug dealer or something, but he was th- the most conspicuous vehicle you could have. Yeah. Uh, so that was, he got pulled over once a week. Was the car painted green? Uh, it was already like a bluish green. Okay. So then he just put stickers all over it. Made it look like the mystery machine. So let's stick sick. with the with the turbulence for now. Uh, and Tommy, turbulence versus the random body so pain. I actually don't think turbulence is the scariest part of flying because uh, tur- like planes don't fall out of the sky. Like that's just something that doesn't happen due to turbulence. Say that. Have you seen the Jello thing? A what? If you hate turbulence, you should look the. There's a TikTok that went viral for people who were scared of turbulence, and it was like just imagine your plane. The atmosphere is basically like Jello. So she puts a little toy plane in a thing of gel, and it's like, you can shake this as much as you want. It's not moving anywhere. Mm-hmm. Wow. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I just based on like statistics and that quite literally turbulence has never taken a plane down. Right. No, I know, but just the feeling of the plane That's shaking. True? Ever. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. Have you Hi- seen this? Hydroplaning way scarier. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like on the runway? 
That, no, uh, no, I was within in a car that you're driving. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you were saying like when the when it's like kind of skidding. What's a little scarier bit. to me is when you land, and uh, being afraid the brakes aren't going to work. Like landing, and you're like, we're going too fast. We're going too fast. Like we're not slowing down. We're not slowing down. That to me is the scariest part of flying. If you've gotten in um, the air. Unless there are terrorists on your plane, you're good till you land. First three yeah. minutes of the flight are the most dangerous, and I keep a stopwatch for the three minutes every single time. I listen to James Taylor, Fire and Rain, <laughs> and then I know I'm good after that song ends. Yeah. Um. But, again, just unless you're, I mean, pri- I'll tell you what, private planes go down way more than anything. Way more. Like 500 people a year or something die in private year? plane yeah. crashes. It's like crazy high. Uh, but if you're on like a commercial airline, you're you're almost certainly fine. If Dave asked you to take a PJ, would you do it? I've done it a few times, and I I, I found out that piece of information while in the air oh. and <laughs> while in like a storm coming back from Jacksonville, and I was like, "This is not good." I declined uh, the PJ. I took an Amtrak instead from Pittsburgh from uh, after rough and rowdy. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't fly private very much. I've done it what I don't know, maybe less than ten times. And commercial, you're probably fine. And uh, a random jolt of pain in your body is horrifying. It's absolutely yeah. horrifying. It's like, I'm dying. This is a heart attack. This is a stroke. This is an aneurysm. This is a heart attack. Whatever it is, you, you just think you're done. And it's statistically more likely that you would die from something like that um, than turbulence. So I'll go with that. And right. I'm going to pee. Yeah, the jolt, while it's fast, you think about that for the next two days. What the fuck was that? Is it going to happen? Because you're waiting for the next. Um, and it's usually always chest. Sometimes it's my back. Sometimes my asshole, and uh, it sucks. You don't want to asshole one. Yeah, just like goes in. Ooh. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what it is. Have you ever trickle up a little bit. A what? Closer to, closer to the gucci area. Oh, the yes. Yeah, that's the worst one. I think, yeah. Among all those. Um, Whenever I drink too much caffeine, uh, my dick like tingles for the rest of the day. I think it's really? my when I piss. I think it's in my piss. It's too much caffeine in my piss or something. Congrats. Thanks, yes, man. <laughs> Jay. Um. Hmm. It was the chest pain versus turbulence. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, turbulence. I have I've had chest pain, and I actually had to go to a cardiologist earlier this year, and I got did like the stuff hooked up to me, and yeah, it's fun, like, right? Had to go home with it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it was actually right after the the Bucks Rams game. <laughs> oh no way. Yeah. Um, and I was not scared at any point in time. It was more of just a fuck. This is gonna be really annoying, and this sucks. Um. So I am actually scared all the time of turbulence. I did not know that stat that no plane has ever gone down. Have you ever seen the stress test of a plane's wings? They bent them in a warehouse. They bent pl- plane wings up, and they can touch tips without breaking. Damn. Yeah. What? Still, makes, yeah. still scared about it. Still scared about it. Anytime the plane moves, I get scared about it. I'm uh, fine with turbulence, actually. Y'all, y'all go watch the Jello video. It'll make you feel better. Uh, that you <laughs> telling me that yeah. made me feel better. No. Yeah. Uh, KB. Turbulence isn't shit. It's leagues below doing something that happens when you're driving the car. Yeah, yeah. like think of going over like a bumper. I'm driving and lose control and it's me that, like, I don't trust me. Uh, and based on everything we've heard so far, you're just a very bad driver. So I wouldn't be very <laughs> calm. It, You should be way more afraid of things you refuse in to a wear car. Glasses. You can't see shit. Anything in a car. You, you guys talk about like 500 a, a year with planes. Mm-hmm. With cars, it's it's statistically Probably a trillion up. times more pot more yeah more negative right but like at the same time i feel like when i'm driving like i'm like oh it, there's a there's a level of fooling your brain where you're like i'm in control i'm in control of this and like when you're flying the plane you're like i have like there's so true like a million things that can go wrong right now it feels more when present. there's like a thunderstorm and you lose control literally mm. you're not you know you're not in control anymore so that's that, like, the, like but, five but, seconds is way scarier than anything on a plane uh, but just like the worst that could happen in my head is like, oh, I get hit. Maybe I get banged up. If like your plane has one problem, you're dead. Like one problem. That's the thing in my head. Like, you know, just statistically speaking, if there was to be an accident between both those things. That's not really true though. But like, think about like, this way. Like they have two engines. Your engine could completely fail and you're still okay. It's just like you get like one. Yeah, you can glide for like what? 60 miles. Yeah, but I don't. Well, you have the second engine, right. first of all. But then, uh, yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So, and then and there's like an a, airport within every how. Like, you're good. But you get like one decompression, the plane blows up. I've done like, so oh, much shit, like, research on planes because I'm so afraid. And I talked. I annoyed the fuck out of Quigs. Oh at yeah, dinner. that's right. We just happened to be sitting next to each other. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm good now. Uh, so you're going with the hydroplaning. Yeah. Well, 
the random body. Oh yeah, that's way worse. Um, that's gonna win, but Big T. Yeah, body pain. Body Turbulence pain. Is, is nothing. That and now we have our last matchup of the day. Maybe you should uh, specify that as like chest pain because like yeah, well, body pain is like your leg. It's like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be just chest pain. Um, next we have our last matchup of the day. It's the number two seed. Uh, this is one of Tommy's, which I agree with wholeheartedly. When a crazy homeless guy starts walking towards you, yep. Um, and that's something. Where for a second, I was like, maybe this is too New York type base, but like every city, every whatever town, they all have the crazy homeless person that scares you a little bit. Um, and that's going up against the number fifteen seed, which Nick you mentioned earlier. Getting the like, let's catch up email mm. from a boss when you know you've been slacking. If it's like a job you hate, whatever. Like if once you get that email, it's it's bad news. It's like the business equivalent of the uh, we need to talk, basically. Um, so you get to go first, Big T. Let's catch up. Which you never, uh, you've never had like a true white collar job, right? This is the this is the first job I've had out of college? Yeah, no way. So, yeah. That's congrats, man. Apply, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, versus the crazy homeless. Listen. <laughs> As we've discussed on this show, uh, there's almost nothing I, I dislike in this world more than homeless people. <laughs> oh, I, I have a genuine disdain for them. And when they approach oh. me, it ruins. I, listen, February 1st, 2020, I still remember the date that, that this asshole homeless guy puts his arms out and st- physically like grabbed me. He's like, I know you have a lighter. I was like, no, I fucking don't, dude. Go away. And then uh, and then one hit me with a crutch, too, a year or so ago. Yeah, uh, it's the homeless. They'll they'll ruin your week, month, and and there's just really nothing you can do about it's it. They're like, allowed get to get a home, dude. Yeah, you know? get a job, you know? I've lived here for some, like, eight years. I've never had a homeless guy touch me. Like, oh, you're twice. a magnet. Twice. Magnet for I got guy. touched by, by a woman in Penn Station. Just pushed me for no reason. Put, like, well, and shoved you? A woman. Oh, she just uh, pushed me, and I just looked at her, and I was like, what was that for? And I just walked away. Because <laughs> we're the New York homeless. <laughs> KB. I've never gotten, like, the can we catch up from a boss mm-hmm. or authority. I would imagine that would be worse, though. I don't, I'm desensitized to homeless people. They, don't, they really don't touch you. They don't really put you in team. fear. They're more just a nuisance when they do approach you. So you're gonna go I'll get the, the, let's catch the up. boss, yeah. All right, Jay. And I don't hate them. Um, can we catch up? I feel like if you have like a friendly relationship with your boss, can we catch up? Could just mean like, hey, I've been out of town for a week. Like, let's talk about what went on. So I don't think that that's really that bad. So the difference here is like, if you're at like a mid level management, whatever. But like, if I'm talking more like you're at a level where you should, you do not converse with your boss like that. You know what I mean? Hmm. And that's going up against what, sorry? It's going up against the uh, crazy homeless guy walking towards you. I feel like the email or, or note from your boss can is most likely bad. Not necessarily. could be pretty catastrophic. The homeless person walking up to you, it's something that is about to happen. Mm-hmm. So you have to prepare yourself for that. That is a moment of fight or flight, quite literally. After uh, you catch a, catch a sniff. <laughs> yeah, one one little whiff for the road. Yeah. I anyone who says they don't do that is a liar. That's not true. <laughs> like you just, it's oh. not in, no, <laughs> that, what a what a thing to right, say. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's not intentional. Yeah, yeah, you can't help it when they walk right. up to you and smell like garbage. You inhale. No, no, if you're if you're walking, if I'm walking down this hallway right here, and there or I guess that's a bad example, but if you're walking in this area and there's someone on the couch who is homeless, you're going to breathe. And you're gonna know what that smells like. I would actually the, do my best not to. Yeah. Then you might be an asshole <laughs> for not smelling. What? <laughs> oh yeah. I said I hated homeless people. That's why you're an asshole. Word. Yeah. And then yeah. I said, and then I said I try not to smell them. You're I'm, an I'm, asshole. You're, 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 you're treating them differently. Like they. Yes. <laughs> yes. I will. Yes. I'm the asshole. Absolutely. Holy shit! That was funny. I don't hold my breath around people. <laughs> that's like the most and you do that is not an asshole <laughs> thing to do yeah no yeah i will yes if i rip a stinky ass fart right now are you going to keep breathing the way you are great point nick i would so no, it, you just you know it's going to stink one king 
you can you can hear it so i can hear you far- don't di- yeah sure okay so i'd probably like oh gross and then i'd walk away but that's something where you're, you're <laughs> so you've changed your behavior no no no. but he is presenting that out as like a hey but a homeless I, person is is, re- is presenting themselves right inherently as homeless. by being homeless i think nick he's saying nick could help it a homeless yes. person couldn't Yes. I think that's what like Steve's it. trying to say. Fucking chat. You're, you, what I you're doing is way worse. You're completely disregarding their unfortunate situation. Wow. Acting like it's not a problem. They're just like me. They're fine. He's like they're the, not. I, they're not in need of like. They're not looking like if, some, if someone's just product. sitting there. They're not always looking for like a handout. What? A I lot feel of, like this has of, gotten what, too what is real. A hand, what do you mean a handout? Like I pass so. To be fair, my frame of reference is from Penn Station to here, which is like three blocks. Every, there are a lot of homeless people that I pass. N- most of them do not have like a change thing out. They're just like literally living in Penn Station. So they're not. I th- They're aware that they smell bad and they yes. know that they, they, you don't have. That's not like a favor to them to, s- to breathe near them. I don't hey think man, a, thanks for smelling me. Yeah. <laughs> me I won't give normal. you a five spot, but I will smell you. <laughs> You made me <laughs> Jesus. Um, you I guess the best quote I can think of is uh, <laughs> sweet isn't as sweet without the sour. I'm picturing a picture of calling home. them the sour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this uh, and the rate and the home uh, the homed people are the sweet? No, no, good smells. <laughs> I'm picturing a home <laughs> I'm picturing a homeless guy with a sign that's like, please smell me. <laughs> I'm just like you. Spare, spare a whiff. Yeah. Yeah. This, is the, spare a sniff. <laughs> this is the would you rather have a million dollars or a dinner with like someone who can like Jay Z or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He he won't you won't give them money, but you'll smell them and <laughs> solidify their humanity. It's worth see more. Those are related at all. It's worth more. It's they, you do make them feel more human with the slow. <laughs> I don't, so that's that's a misconception. I don't do that. You don't do like the cartoon sniff? Like No, I just go and I'm walking and yeah, you smell things that are around you. And if they're odor or whatever is out in the air, then yes, I can't, I, Can I, I ask you I, one I, qu- I noticed that. Does it make you feel 0.1% better as a person having smelled them intentionally? No, I don't think about it. Okay. <laughs> That's been smelling homeless people. Uh, what homeless what are the choices? <laughs> homeless Vietnam forget. vet, father of three, just what? looking for someone to smell Tell me. me. <laughs> what are we? Arrow with? What were the two things that led us to this? Uh, crazy homeless people. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The let's catch up email. Uh, Nick, now you're up. Uh, it's a let's, ca- let's catch up email. Um, you always assume you're fired. Mm. Um, and it's it's always for later in the week. Then they'll probably postpone it. It sucks. Um you know, being fired, I'd imagine, would suck. Yeah. In that situation. Yeah. I've never been fired, so I don't really know what the situation would be like. I've only ever quit. Have you? Has anyone here been fired? I've, I've, got, got, I've got been laid, laid off. off, yeah. Uh, but I feel like laid off is different than being like... Uh, I was I was laid off for performance reasons. Okay, so that's, that's fired. That's yeah. fired. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it was it was a sales job where you needed a certain number, and I just like did not hit that. Okay, that's yeah, a, my company was acquired, and they did not carry over my department. Mm. Okay, yeah, still see, like I feel like that's a little bit different than like, hey, you're not up to snuff, you're out of here. You were fired, Steve. Yeah, you quite literally didn't meet the standard <laughs> of the job. Yeah, honestly, yeah. it was kind of a cool experience. Being fired? Oh. Yeah. It was my second job, and ironically, the my first job, the person who hired me um, at a completely separate company, gave me my first job out of college, came to the second company that I was at. We didn't have a relationship, and she was the person that had the conversation with me to let it go. Wow. And, and it was like her first week, and I, the whole time I was like, this is crazy. I was like, you brought me into the working world, and you're taking me out of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah I mean, sick. I knew I was, I knew I was getting canned, so it wasn't a mm-hmm. yeah. huge thing. Uh, Did you get to bring the cardboard box out of the office? <laughs> I always wanted one of those. Yeah, uh, I never had enough stuff to use it, but I don't think I had enough stuff. I think I think or no, because I was put on like a, it was like a sales job, and your number was on the board, and like I had like zero on the board for a bit. And everybody I, was, I was seeing on, that I was zero. A, I was on a plan. Yeah, it sucked. That sucked. Oh, um, and so I like gradually started to to squirrel things home, and I, I mean, I yeah. knew it was coming. Um, so Tommy, you're up. Crazy homeless. Yeah, I mean, similar to, to Big T, this is my first job out of college, so I can't relate as much. But I will say, like, a text from Dave or that you're not expecting that, like, you did something wrong. Call me from Dave would be like, 
is it as scary as it gets or yeah. just like are you an idiot like if you if you mess something up it's like oh no um but the crazy homeless guy literally could kill you mm-hmm. um and i think that that moment where they're walking towards you and it is like this could be it because the homeless people sometimes they do snap and they attack people like it's a real possibility people on the subways whatever yeah, uh, I That's think become a new fear of mine. Like I look pushing. around on the subway more often. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I take my headphones off in the subway and I lean against a pole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or I look cool as shit too. Lean yeah. against the pole. Yeah, standing against the yellow line. You know, if you're standing on the yellow line, afraid someone's gonna come behind you, push you. Yeah. Um So I'll go with crazy homeless guy. Crazy homeless guy. Uh, and now we're gonna get into our playoffs. But first, let's hear from our last sponsor of the day, Wondry. All right, let's talk about Wondry. Remember the days before streaming services when you could come home from high school and it was only a few hours until that TV show everyone was watching was about to come on? Your friends are on the way over for the watch party and the smell of popcorn filled the room. Well, in 1999, that show was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, starring the one and only, well, not really a star, but David Boreanaz, who we've interviewed before and had a very odd take about how he thought uh, Jalen Hurts was better than Lamar Jackson, but we'll get to that again on a different date uh so your friends you know they all love buffy the vampire slayer in 1990 let me redo that all right let's talk about one dream remember the days before streaming services when you could come home from high school and it was only a few hours until that tv show that everyone was watching was about to come on your friends were on the way over for the watch party and the smell of popcorn filled the room well in 1999, that show was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, starring former LCB guest David Boreanaz, who I still can't believe has the opinion that Jalen Hurts is better than Lamar Jackson, but we can talk about that a different time. In the new podcast from Wondry, the rewatcher, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, they are taking it back to 1999. Get on your knee-high boots and paste that poster of Angel on the wall because it is time to enter the Buffyverse. I love that. I love the Buffyverse. That just sounds cool. So what are you waiting for? Enter the Buffyverse with Elena and Ash. Listen to the rewatcher, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, or listen early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or on the Wondery app. Thank you to Wondery. All right, so we're going to start with our playoff matchups. We have first the pat-down for the phone wallet keys going up against uh, when you can't find your parents. So we'll start with you, Tommy. It's fucking tough. Um, Is it? I mean, the, the there's worse consequences to like, uh, you know, losing your phone or wallet. It's more realistic than the fact that you actually just like lost your parents at a store. <laughs> uh, but if we're talking true fear, like what gives you that true feeling of scare and fear more when you're a helpless little kid and you look around and you don't see your parents anywhere? That's that's a, a fear over your body that you almost can't get as an adult unless you're in a legitimately very, very scary situation. Mm-hmm. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with not being able to find your parents a, as a kid. Not being able to find your parents. I will say that the consequences of the two are very different. Like if you lose your phone keys wallet, like you're majorly inconvenienced. If you lose your parents, you're getting raped. Like that's, yeah, but like how often? You know what I mean? Like I'm picturing, raped? <laughs> I'm picturing like losing your parents because like like I said, they moved to a different bench at the theme park. Like mm. so ninety nine times out of a hundred, nothing actually. Like your parents yeah. aren't actually missing. Like you just can't find them for thirty seconds. But that thirty second fear of where are they? That's like it's just a, a trembling fear in your body that it's a, it's a different type of fear than when you're an adult and maybe lost a credit card. So I'm okay. gonna go with the. The can't find your parents. Can't find your parents, Nick. Aside from the one time I couldn't find my parents, it very rarely, rarely happened to me. My parents. But you remember? Very, my parents were very, very like helicopter parents because I was almost kidnapped when I was like two. Like a guy tried to pull me out of a cart in Chicago. Yeah, he went up to my mom. He's like, "That's a lot of money in your pocket." And then like my mom walked away, and then the guy tried to like grab me, but he didn't know my dad was there. Uh, so ever since then, my mom's been mortified. Uh, so wait, what's the rest of the story? Did your dad like? We went, like, my dad, like, ran after him. No, the guy ran away, and we told the place at the, uh, it was, like, a mall in Chicago. I was, like, one or two, one and a half. And, uh, yeah, it just, uh, nothing came of it. Mm. Kidnapping, I'm sure, was easier back then. For sure. Um, especially my parents, some country bumpkins in the big city. Uh, yeah. But, like, uh, so they were always around. They were uh, hyper-protective. I wish I could have lost them a little bit. Mm. Um, so it's, I'm going to go the pat-down. Don't feel pat anything. Pat-down, can't yeah. feel anything. Jay? 
Uh, losing her parents by a mile. Losing your parents by a mile? Yeah. Up in the pat down, like, just call me, get your phone. Worst case scenario, you go to Verizon or wherever and get a new phone. But, like, the pat down, like, you know it's there even, like, on the on the Uber to the airport is horrifying. I almost put it off. I almost put off doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, parents, the the consequences are so much worse. Yeah. Well, again, if. Um, KB. Yeah, I think it boils down to, like, you, you have the brain of a seven-year-old when it happens. You yeah. have no deductive reasoning skills to, like, account for the probability of something bad happening. I think that's just pure fear. So that. They can't find the parents. Big T. Yeah, phone is is worse for your day, but in terms of potential consequences, I mean, you could you could be... Bad thing. Bad things could happen. Bad things, Francis. Losing your parents. Losing your parents. Your parents once brought you to Syria, correct? To meet Harrison Ford. No, that's not right. <laughs> am I in the same? Am I in the right ballpark? Uh, you've got a few loose ends. The connection was Jordan, but it was in England. Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. I thought you were there at that place, Petra, or whatever it was. What do you think Harrison Ford would be doing in Syria? <laughs> I had Jordan confused with Syria for Very Petra, where they close. had that big ass thing. Like Star Wars, like a Tatooine scene. I was in Morocco. Oh, it was, yeah, but uh, it's still like that. He could be there. I guess that's true. Mm. It was when he was filming. No, they, they he had become friends with the King of Jordan from filming oh. Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. Yeah. I was about to say, I feel like the timing didn't mess, didn't match up on that. Um, but losing the parents is going to move on. How many times have you smelled a homeless person intentionally? Does do you think it humanizes them? Do you uh, hold your breath when you're walking past a homeless person? A, you ever heard a woman question. pilot? What's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> you missed you missed a, a big debate about smelling homeless people, which is something Stephen Chay feels very strong about that you should. Should you? Why? He called Big T an asshole for holding his breath when he walks past a homeless. Person. I don't even hold my breath. I'll just like stop breathing. Uh, I'll, I'll breathe bit. in real, yeah. real quick before, and then you pass, and then you let it out. Yeah, that's I don't guess that's holding your breath. You're describing like, holding your breath. It's not like an active hold. It's like a, you're like <gasps> it's a pause. Yeah. yeah, I I have hold a morbid curiosity. Oh, holy shit! Did you say the same thing. Yeah, really. He's been a staunch defender of. This. I need to know that it's bad. In yep. order to then hold my breath. Yes. I won't. Thank no, that's a little. I at least. His is a morbid that. curiosity. He said you're, you're being morally like, righteous. Yeah, you're that. saying like it makes <laughs> you a good about. person. No, I'm not. I'm just saying yours makes you an asshole. For I holding his breath. I, I disagree strongly. You're you, assuming so, that they smell bad. Yes. Well, yes. well I said yes. two minutes not bad. this, yes. I hate homeless people. They, so I feel like if anything makes me an asshole, it's that. But on the, on the thing of smell, sure. Yeah. I don't think it makes you an asshole. But you, yeah, you're just assuming that they smell awful. Yes. You are legitimately... I'm assuming risk- they don't have a home. I'm assuming they didn't shower. If because I'm tired of homeless people that smell bad, that's an assumption I'm, I'm willing to make. Uh, yes. You're refraining from breathing. Not really. <laughs> you just said you're not breathing when you pass them. You you're you're the near them for like five seconds tops. You, don't even, you won't like even consciously one realize so, you're not also, breathing. Walking by a homeless person outside on the street, that's not that bad. Right, it's, in, it's inside on the subway mm. where you yeah. cannot sure. Escape. Of course, yes, that is, and the the smell is inside. That's really where it's bad. Yes, mm-hmm. agreed. Uh, okay, so our next matchup is getting the we need to talk text. Oh God, which is uh, so. This is a combination of both that and getting a call me from a parent. Um, going up against the number nine seed. Uh, realizing that your alarm wasn't on, you missed it, whatever it was, and that you're late to whatever it is that you're supposed to be to. Uh, so, Francis, you get to go first. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know what, for me, would beat... I'm sorry I'm late to the game here, but I don't know what beats the we need to talk. And for me, it's not so much we need to talk. It's 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 that. It's like, hey, do you have a second? Mm. Or like, yo, can you call me? Um, it, it, it instantly sends my heart rate racing stomach drop as right. someone who fears trouble i get in tr- i have gotten in trouble so much in my life and often it is precipitated by that message mm-hmm. that is the summons to the the grim reaper uh and i i it really it, when when it when people send that message and then follow up in our when we talk with something benign i get mad at them Oh yeah, no, we yeah. talked about this. Yeah. I'm like, Curious. how dare you utilize looming language mm-hmm. to to just tell me like 
is there any chance you're free on Saturday? You know, like fucking ask that question. Thank don't, you. you don't need to up. Set it up. I, I, I am livid. Stakes. And then I'm the bad guy for stakes being Stakes don't need to be so high. Mm -hmm. Just fucking lay it on me. Why are you assuming it was something bad? Should I should I be worried about something? What the oh, fuck? Ugh. Yeah. Mm. The that's a people who do that. That's like a complex, I think. Mm. We I also think they don't realize they're doing it. They're probably yeah. people who haven't gotten in trouble as much. In, in no, I think they they know the power they yield. Yes, they, yeah. they crave that authority. That they know how yes. much power they have. Yes, I think they know how you feel that. while they during that situation. Yeah, without a doubt. We were saying it's almost even worse when you get the text saying like we need to talk later, like hey let's t we need to talk later on. I we need to talk. I that I've never gotten that and had it not be something bad. Yeah, it's never. I'm a saying the more benign cousin, like, yeah. uh, hey, do you have a second? Or like, can you right. call me? You know, are you free for a call later? Yeah, yeah. Yes. any of that, like a a message that sets up an on a, a conversation. Mm, gotcha, Big T. What's that up against? Uh, it's going up against like the alarm not being on, missing. Oh, uh, I, while that is a big fear of mine, I don't think it's as bad as the the text we need call. to talk yeah yeah Maybe. the text text jay <sighs> yeah i guess the text it's gonna move on by time although in the, if it's like something very important like you realize you're late to like a job interview or first day at the job mm -hmm. i do think it's like a, a big practice or a game they're similar in that they both give you periods of fear where yes. from the time you wake up to the time like you get there, you have that fear of, oh, no, I'm late. What's going to happen? What are the consequences of me being late? But also similar to the text of until you know what the piece of information they're going to give you is, you're afraid. What is it they're going to tell me? What is it they're going to tell me? But there's usually probably worse things coming from what we need to talk than yeah, we're late exactly. to say. I, I also think the older you get, the less the missed alarm clock can Mother's hurt team. your life mm. somehow it's like okay whatever you missed a meeting well these days it's like just lie yeah hey yeah. i'm sorry i come late and the people fucking let you off the hook mm -hmm. whereas when you're younger you know missing an alarm clock can mean that you've missed an exam or yeah or or exactly or like i remember in college I missed a like a conditioning session yeah, in the morning, and I had to run until I puked. Yeah, and that was a nightmare. And you knew, like, running all the way down to the gym, that it was going to be that you were going to yeah. be punished. Yeah, that's that that walk of shame or, or terror. You're not going to be punished now for missing a meeting. Mm -hmm. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. Oh, physical punishment. Yeah. But I'm saying like when I was in college, I missed a conditioning session because I slept through an alarm and I got I for a week I had to come to like 6 a.m. running session. College where? <laughs> no. Say it. I don't want to. Say <laughs> where I went to college. <laughs> went to Harvard, Francis. God damn. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, so now to get into our conference finals here that we need to talk versus not being able to find your parents, Tommy. I feel like this is easy for the we need to talk. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really think if if we're talking the true definition of fear, I think to, to Kyle's yeah. point of you're so young and you don't have the, the reasoning of eh, it's probably fine. They're probably in another aisle in the store. They're probably on a different bench. They're probably five minutes late to picking me up at school. You can't feel that. Your whole body is in terror. It's like, uh-oh, did something happen to my parents? Am I about to get kidnapped? Uh, where are they? Like, they're your safety blanket. Mm -hmm. And to not be able to find them does send a fear down your body that – that we need, like we said, if it's from a girl, you just know whatever you're getting broken up with. Uh, it, it, there are times where it's not that serious. Like there are times where it is somebody just abusing the power of, of a we need to talk message. I think true fear that takes over your body when you can't find your parents as a little kid is what I'm going to go with. Gotcha. Okay. Nick? Yeah, but I think also, it's kind of unfair to, speed to put up a little bit kid too, ones as we're running. Here. Oh, yeah. We have to hurry up a little bit. Yeah. yeah um, it's the we need to talk, I think, because especially with like the iPhone, you see those dots and it's going on for a long time. Like, okay, what? And then it's a long stretch of dots or like a, yeah. you know. Uh, it sucks. It's inevitable. So talk, Jay. Yes. 
One of these things makes you nervous uh, and certainly dread what's about to come. The other makes most of the people cry, and that's mm-hmm. not being able to find your parents. So I'm going to go with that. Parents? Yeah, your parents are your life support at that age. When you lose them, it, it's complete fear, panic. Big T? Last time I said parents because the potential consequences are worse, but the consequences of we need to talk as an adult are always bad. Hmm. So that. Francis? I'm going with a a frequency choice here because I I just think that the we need to talk or can we talk has happened so much more in my life than my parents losing me uh, that I'm going to go with um, the we need to talk. We need to talk is going to get into the, uh, or actually, no, we're tied up. So I'll tie break and I'll push through the we need to talk. And for a lot of the reasons Francis just said, uh, on the other side, getting a doorbell knock slash ring when you're not expecting one versus hearing and Francis, I know you're going to like this one hearing. This is your captain speaking and it's a woman. Oh my God. (laughs) So Francis, Uh oh, (laughs) which one are you going with? Um, the shock factor. I pain. have to go with, I guess, the unexpected doorbell or knock, although that doesn't really scare me that much. I hate to say this because I now live in a doorman building, mm-hmm. which means that whoever's there has passed some level of security. Security. Yeah. Um, but uh, frankly, a, a female pilot doesn't bother me for some reason i almost feel like she's probably more qualified for having overcome <laughs> gender biases and you know but she's go- probably more emotional yeah think about who's the one female pilot you know name one female name, pilot. One, name the female yeah. pilot well, i don't know. know a male you, pilot no but you, know, you know one, one female, female pilot. pilot well who is it I, I feel like this is Not obvious. Personal. It is very obvious. Yeah, like a character? Obvious. No, a real historical figure. One female pilot. Oh, uh, Amelia Earhart. And what did she famously do? Went missing. Crashed her plane. And, wh- and what did Captain Sullenberger famously do? Saved a plane. Saved the plane. In the Hudson. Hero on the He was on a jet plane. That's even harder. Yeah, but there's there are there are female astronauts. There are I'm not risking my life though. <laughs> yeah. I you know what I, I what I would say, oh man, this is risky territory. More disconcerting than a female pilot is an is a pilot on like an american airlines flight who has a very thick accent mm. oh, oh. <laughs> wow any kind you're like whoa how did he yeah. get here <laughs> yeah i heard my pilot screaming on the phone to like his girlfriend before he got on the flight once i was like oh fuck oh, no <laughs> um in the interest of time, because we do have, I yeah. think, like two or three minutes left, I will let's move forward the female captain, because obviously that's the worst one. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll move forward on the other side of that. We had the smelling, the or not smelling, but the crazy homeless person walking towards you versus the random body pain. I feel like safely. Just do can, quick rapid fire votes, no explanations. Okay, so we'll do Francis, crazy homeless person versus a random body pain. Crazy homeless person walking towards you. Um, homeless person. Homeless person. Oboe. Oboe. Uh, the, the, the body pain. Body pain. Homeless person. Homeless person. Is hobo short homeless? What's bow? Body? Boy? <laughs> homeless boy? Is that what it is? That. Uh, yeah. What's what's hobo? I don't think it's a portmanteau. I don't know. It's, it's not a portmanteau. portmanteau. No. No. It's just a word? Yeah. Oh, it's not a portmanteau. It should be. Yeah, and now it might be. Homeless. He's got to be homeless something. Yeah. Hobo. I'll look it up when you're going with that. It, Body it odor. might be. Uh, it <laughs> comes from a stowaway train traveler from the Hoboken, New Jersey train yard. Really? Oh, oh, hobo. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there we go. Cool. Doing with the crazy hobo. Hobo's going to move on. Hobo versus female captain. Tommy? I mean, the hobo probably won't hurt you. The female captain will land yeah. you in the ocean. Mm-hmm. So I'll go with okay. that. I've had female pilots and I'm fine. Uh, was it a bumpier flight? Probably, but uh, I'm going to go with homeless person. Homeless person. Homeless person. Homeless person. Uh, the the pilot. Yeah. Pilot. 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 Homeless person. Homeless person. We're tied up. <sighs> Fucking female captain moving in. We the can't pilot. put this graphic on the main page. <laughs> <God. laughs> I know we're, we're just yeah, rolling with it at this point. Yeah, we're going to have to replace it with just like ghosts. We need to talk versus the female pilot. <laughs> we need to talk. We need to talk. Pilot. Pilot. 
expect you to be serious. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I've been yeah. sitting here thinking the whole time, they're 1.4% of captains. I've definitely been on more than 70 flights in my life, so I'm due at this point. Your, your next wow. flight should uh, be a female. Yeah. Um, By the way, if, if the plane were in trouble, I could see a female pilot saying, we need to talk. Oh, yeah. Over the Tom, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. Which now it makes talk. me pushing the female pilot through on so many rounds seem more Jay sincere. Jay wanted to say it real bad and wouldn't do it. Mm. Oh, we need to talk. We need to talk. And I'm not going to vote for the female pilot with Big T. That's sexist. So I'll go with, I'll go with yeah. the hobo or whatever the fuck it was. We need no, to, no, no. It's we, need a, the, we need to talk. Yeah. We need to talk. The winner of the scariest moments bracket. Uh, we'll be back next week with a whole brand new one. Uh, until then, we'll see you next time.